friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another Lick of the Week tutorial. In today's session, I'm going to be sharing with you a very cool, very useful jazz blues lick. This is something that you can apply to a 2-5-1 progression, that's the most common chord progression in all of jazz music, and it's also a progression that pops up very often in more advanced blues progressions. So in this tutorial, we're going to get started learning the source scale, that's the scale that the lick is coming from, then I'm going to break down the chord progression, you're going to learn some very useful jazz blues chord shapes, then I'm going to break up the lick into two different sections for easier learning. You can follow along using my PDF study guide at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Support the channel there, gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now, let's get started. Okay, cool let's look at the fretboard, getting started with section one of this lesson. Learning the source scale that our lick of the week is coming from. So this one predominantly comes from a scale that most of us already know. The major scale, this time in the key of C. Looks and sounds like this. Okay, so that was 810 on the low E string. The A string, 7, 8, 10. The D string, 7, 9, 10. Same thing on the G string. The B string, 8, 10. And then the high E string, 7, 8, 10. Put all that together, and we have... Okay, so if that's new to you, practice the hell out of that, get it into your muscle memory, take time to think about the intervals and the note names, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then the same exact thing going into the next octave. Remember, that's the fastest way to improve as a lead guitar player. The number one thing guitar players can do to improve their playing is just get to know the names of the notes on the fretboard. Now, if you already knew that scale, some other things that you can do to make it sound more bluesy is to consider just the pen tonic version of it by removing the 4th and 7th scale degrees. Okay, you can also add in uh, dominant 7th, that's the 7th note of the scale, flat it back one half step, and also the flat thirds, which we're going to see in our lick of the week. Okay, very good everybody, you have the source scale down, now we're jumping into section 2 of this lesson, learning the chord progression that our lick is being played over top of. So our lick is played over top of a basic 2-5-1 progression in the key of C. And those numbers come from the C major scale. D is the second note. All right, uh, G is the fifth note. And C is the first note. Okay, so that's 2-5-1. And those bass notes can be converted to the chords. D minor 7. G7 and... C7, or played here as a C7 add, 13. Okay, but I've also included for context the turnaround section that's commonly played at the end of a jazz blues progression. So the full progression will sound like this, starting with the D minor 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, G7, 2, 3, 4, C7, you can play it as a bar, and then A7, all right, then D minor seven, back to the G seven, and then resolve into C seven, add 13. Okay, so one more time, starting with that D minor seven, use your tabs to find those grips. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, split measure. One, two, three, four, one, Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're gonna be playing over top of those first three chord changes. D minor seven, G seven, and then C seven. All right, again, the lick is gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. All 
right? And at full speed, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's break that down. Okay, so this lick of the week starts off with a very cool arpeggio technique over the D minor seven chord. It's gonna be a descending arpeggio followed by an ascending arpeggio. Okay, it's gonna start off with a walk up. And then it's just going to be forward and backward. Okay, so we're playing eight, 10 on the B string. All right, then we're going to play eight on the high E string. Stacking 10, 10, B string and G string. And then down to seven. All right, then going back the way we came. 10, 10, both with my ring finger here, and then back to eight. Okay, so eight, 10, 10, seven, 10, 10, eight. And in rhythm. Something that you can always play over top of. A minor two chord in a given key. Okay, one more time. Okay, next, we're gonna have a little uh, flat third to major third action going back and forth between the 11th and 12th frets as we play over top of the G7 chord. And then finally, resolve onto the major third, your C7 chord to end the lick. Okay, so part two of this lick, once again, sounds like this. Okay, so that was 11 up to 12. Repeat. Eight, eight. All right, now I'm on the B string. I'm going to the G string now, 10. And then to the minor third. That's the eighth fret. Going up a half step. To resolve back to major. Right there inside the C7 chord. Now you put parts one and two together and we have one, two, three, four. And at full speed, a one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Just like that. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this Lick of the Week tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash with lessons. Hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.